and I'm Professor of Gender Technology and Cultural Politics at the University of West London and I'm here to answer three questions about AI. So the first question is about how I would characterise the present. Uh, what scenario do I think we're in? Well, I think it's clear when we look at recent efforts at AI governance that there is considerable anxiety within legal and policy making bodies about the point at which humans meet their evolutionary successors, intelligent machines. The ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI published by the EU Commission's high level expert group on AI, for example, adopts what it calls a human centric approach in which the human being enjoys a unique and inalienable moral status of primacy in the civil, political, economic and social fields. And these guidelines insist that AI systems should hence be developed in a manner that respects, serves and protects humans physical and mental integrity, personal and cultural sense of identity and satisfaction of their essential needs. Uh, indeed, the first of its four ethical principles is respect for human autonomy, while human agency and oversight tops its list of seven requirements of trustworthy AI. Elsewhere, the guidelines stress the importance of explainability in relation to both the technical processes of an AI system and the related human decisions, stating that, quote, whenever an AI system has a significant has a significant impact on people's lives, it should be possible to demand a suitable explanation for the AI systems decision making process. Such explanation should be timely and adapted to the expertise of the stakeholder concerned, e.g. layperson, regulator or researcher, end quote. These kinds of legal and regulatory frameworks, which are typically being written somewhat after the fact of technical and corporate developments, of course, are built around human in the loop, on the loop or in command approaches. That is around approaches which frame agency in terms of the capacity for more or less direct human intervention. This is, of course, entirely predictable, given their, given their function and their provenance. The EU Commission's high level expert group, for example, explicitly bases its model of AI ethics on the fundamental rights enshrined in the EU treaties, the EU Charter and international human rights law. And it describes its approach as drawing on existing EU frameworks, which share a common foundation rooted in respect for human dignity, in which the human being enjoys a unique and inalienable moral status. Uh, such a foundation and discursive framing makes human centricity an inevitability, I think. When one looks elsewhere, though, we find that the role of the human in AI development is subject of a rather more contestation. And that sort of brings me neatly onto question number two. Well, in a completely different register, albeit one also accused of technocratic tendencies, Benjamin Bratton's work sets out to carefully decenter the human within planetary systems, including but not limited to AI systems. Or rather, it points to the ways in which human agency is revealed as already de-emphasized by the complex systems in, through and with which we operate. Um, such unrequested demystifications are disturbing, he remarks, especially when they demote us from a place of presumed privilege in some way. In the terraforming, Bratton notes that if moments of crucial choice depend on everything that is already routinized, environmentally embedded automated decisions, everything already in place within a new purpose, without a new purpose, then the political would refer not only to those rare self-conscious executive choices, but even more so to all those choreographies of technically entrenched pathways. Discussing something akin to what Marx would call the general intellect, though emphasizing not human industry and uh, human will, 
but rather an ecological approach of interactive biotic and abiotic amalgams. He argues that the general grounding ecology of automation allows previous cognition, abstractions and decision to take root, enabling uses as yet unimagined. Such work addresses consequential cascades of effects stemming from the interrelation and co-evolution of actors and systems, and suggests that the world is made and remade not just by political decision, but by its dissolving of decision into automatic and prosthetic systems. This results not merely in further fusion between human and machine, but also in distinctive patterns of their separation, new zones, uh, partitions and exclusions, which serve to remove human intervention from the local loop. Uh, whereas, for example, the European Commission um, sees the extraction of the human as contrary to the requirements of trustworthy AI and as a threat to the moral status of the human, Bratton's account points not just to the utility of such extraction at a technical level, so the ideas of explainability and comprehensive oversight may, after all, become something of a fantasy as we reach a certain degree of technical complexity, but to the benefits that accrue at a political level. He argues that any action that transforms the world can be absorbed into a technical process that no longer demands subjective volition for every operation. Not only is the action automated, but the volition is as well. And this is framed, uh, interestingly, not as an eradication of agency, but rather as its conceptual reorientation. Automation automates autonomy, as he puts it. And autonomy is less about free will than what aspects of action can be done without full deliberation or even without choice. So what are the main challenges that this situation poses for thinking about democracy? So our, our third question. The diverging currents of thinking about the human that I've gestured toward here, so human-centric on the one side and human-decentric or eccentric on the other, raise significant questions not simply about democracy, but also about agency more generally. Where do we locate agency within more than human worlds inclusive of AI systems? In my own work, I attempt to critically engage with perhaps one of the most stridently human decentric currents of contemporary philosophy, and that is feminist posthumanism. Now, I have a lot in common with writers in this tradition, but there are you know, one or two particular elements that I occasionally take issue with. Some tendencies within posthumanism are so hell-bent on resisting human exceptionalism and on situating the human within wider networks of biotic and abiotic actors, you know, compost and gut bacteria as much as intelligent computers, that they end up ignoring much of what makes our species distinctive, namely our seemingly unique, for the time being, capacity for abstract reasoning. In seeking to counter what they view as a pernicious sense of species entitlement, one they feel is liable to lead to widespread ecological devastation, post-human feminists stress humanity's embeddedness in assemblages of loose mutual reliance in a manner that, to me, sometimes risks implying uh, an ecology of equivalences. My feeling is that, after a certain point, an insistence upon multi-species cross-actor interdependency makes the process of conceiving of agency, be it individual or collective, increasingly difficult. We risk decentering the human to the point that it's hard to retain a focus on our exceptional capacities to both destroy and potentially, hopefully, repair at planetary scale. And what can we do with that? Who does it help? I find Reza Negrostani's work on inhumanism particularly helpful here. Uh, Reza, himself an, a very astute thinker of AI, sets up the human as a constructible hypothesis, a space of navigation and intervention, and he seeks to, el to elaborate what real human significance consists in. In this sense, inhumanism is a project that begins by dissociating human significance from human glory. 
one that takes humanism to its ultimate conclusions by constructing a revisable picture of us that functionally breaks free from our exceptions and historical biases as to what this image should be, should look like, or should mean. As such, it positions the human as a springboard or a lever and identifies a propensity for self-transcendence, self-overcoming, or self-revision as a key quality to be cultivated within Homo sapiens and uh, our descendants. I find it much easier to conceive of an idea of responsibility and meaningful political agency according to this kind of framework, rather than those that position the species as one unexceptional node in a flattened web of autonomous and non-autonomous stuff. Inhumanism encourages us to recognize that the human enables particular forms of agential doing and facilitates still useful kinds of collective project without suggesting that the human must be retained as it stands. I think that's important in an age of complexity in which we're entangled with all sorts of other forces, systems and actors, including artificial intelligence. Uh, I hope that goes some way to answering some of your questions. Uh, thank you so much for your time.